Mr. President, at the recent Civil Rights Symposium at Austin, when your civil rights papers were open, uh, you made uh, a lot of interesting statements, but one in particular I'd like to mention here now. You said, I do not want to say that I've always seen this matter in terms of the special plight of the black man as clearly as I came to see it in the course of my life and experience and responsibility. How did you come to see it at some point? What, what, what was the moment of revelation? I don't know that I can pinpoint a day or time or an hour. I think that we're all the products uh, of our environment. And here on the Perdinalis, uh, we uh, did not grow up in any prejudiced atmosphere. This area is populated uh, by Germans who immigrated here 100 years ago. We have few, if any, black citizens. Although when I was a child, three or four years old, I grew up with Mexican-Americans and they were my playmates. But like most other citizens uh, of this country, uh, I took my own rights for granted and uh, I did not uh, uh, see and feel and was not as concerned with my fellow man as I later became, as my service uh, extended itself and as I became more acquainted with the problems uh, of the land. When I was a young man, I taught in a Mexican-American school. And uh, there I got my real deep first impressions uh, of the prejudices that existed and the inequity of our school system between whites and browns. Uh, later, I was an NYA administrator and dealt with the poverty groups. Many young people uh, in the NYA were blacks and browns, and I saw the inequalities of our system then. Later, as a young congressman, uh, when I was a candidate, and uh, I would go campaigning in my district, uh, when I finished my speech, all the people come through, shake hands with me, the whites would come through first, the blacks would stand aside waiting their turn, and uh, I remember on occasion or two, uh, I was criticized severely for asking the blacks to come through and shake hands with them. Uh, they felt that I was uh, extending to them a, a privilege that uh, they shouldn't have. Uh, very few were voting in Texas in those days because we had a poll tax that uh, uh, helped to disenfranchise them. And, uh, they were not encouraged to vote. But as they participated in the elections, and I uh, uh, saw their problems and got to know them through my work and teaching and my early years in Congress, I, I think I gradually took on uh, uh, a, a, a different viewpoint. As Vice President, uh, uh, dealing with the cause of the minorities and trying to uh, uh, evaluate their problems and find a solution to, me, to them, uh, uh, no doubt uh, gave me a breadth of uh, understanding and vision I hadn't had before. And finally, when I became president and realized that uh, I was the leader of the country and that they were, I was the president of all the people and uh, all the people were looking to me to correct the in equalities and inequities and injustices, and there was something that I could do about it. Uh, I concluded that uh, I, now that I have the power, I'm going to use it every way I could. And of course, uh, uh, most of my efforts uh, that brought fruit were during the time when I had the power of the presidency behind me. By 1937, you had been elected to Congress. Uh, did it, uh, was it difficult for you to reconcile the, the problem of uh, representing a constituency in Texas with uh, the need, to, your, your, your new felt need to uh, take a stand on civil rights? First, I didn't have the power to do much about it as an individual congressman of 435, but I did not enthusiastically exercise uh, the power I did have because uh, 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 first of all, uh, I, I couldn't have done much about it. And second of all, I was not aware of the extent of the overall injustices. 
that was practiced upon him as a young congressman that I later realized as a leader of the nation in the Senate and as vice president and president. At Gettysburg in 1963, when still vice president, you said this. Until justice is blind to color, until all education is unaware of race, until opportunity is unconcerned with the color of men's skins, emancipation will be a proclamation, but emancipation will not be a fact. Wasn't that just about as strong a statement as you'd ever made up to that point? Perhaps. I think that's still true. I thought it was very true then. We've made a lot of progress, but we haven't made near enough. And education is not blind to color in this uh, country. And uh, justice is not unaware of race. And uh, it'll take us decades to uh, try to uh, bring the white man, the black man, the brown man on equal footing in all of these fields. But there's no question but what uh, a great many people felt that when we had the Emancipation Proclamation, we had made great steps forward, and we had. Uh, but, uh, but we had not solved our problems, and a hundred years went by, and uh, we'd done very little about it. Now, we have had a rapid advancement in the period of the 60s, and I hope we'll have in the 70s. Uh, but uh, I believe that's a strong statement. I intend it to be strong, but I think it's an accurate statement. Hello everyone, I spend a lot of time trying to get you guys nice videos, so please subscribe to this page, and please subscribe to my second page. The link to my second page is in the description section. Thank you.